we can remember that part. The problem is that we skip over verse 21. Mm -hmm. and, and verse 21 tells us that, that uh, we are supposed to submit one to another. And, and so the concept of submitting, realize that God is a God of order. God has placed himself in order. So, so we, we, we know that it, within the scripture, uh, you know, that, that uh, you know, God, even of himself, doesn't like disorder. And so in, in 1 Corinthians, the chapter 14, verse 33, it, it tells us, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's, of, of the Lord's people. But then also, not only, God, God was a God of order back at the beginning. In, back in Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it, chapter 1, verse 2 tells us, Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So even from the beginning, God didn't like disorder. God, God brought order even when there was disorder and chaos in the world. And so the problem is that the devil has tried to pervert that, that concept of submit and try to make us think that submission is a bad thing. When, when, when realizing that it's not about, see, the problem is, you know, interesting enough, many of us that are, that, that are, that are working or that, that encounter uh, authority, we don't have a problem submitting to our boss. We don't have a problem submitting to the police officer. Why? Because when there is a natural repercussion of not submitting. Mm -hmm. Something bad might happen. The, the problem is that we don't take, we don't hold God in his high esteem as we do that police officer. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we don't think that, God, well, you know, I don't have to submit God because uh, nothing bad is going to happen. And we have to realize that it's not about uh, d d doing something for a person. It's about submitting unto the Lord. And, and so, 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 men, we have to realize that you, you know, go with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, ladies, I'm going to talk to us a little bit about what the Word of God says from the female perspective, the wise perspective. And don't worry, Pastor Carl's going to talk about from the male perspective, the husband's perspective. But I just want to ask a question to all of the ladies, and whether you're married or not, how many of you want to be obedient to God? By show of hands. All right, put your hands down. Is there anyone who does not want to be obedient to God? All right, keep that in mind, okay? Because by submitting ourselves one to another, we're being obedient to God. It's not that I'm saying I'm going to submit myself to you and you're going to lord it over me. It's saying I'm submitting myself to you as unto the Lord. I'm looking past you the earthly example, and I'm seeing the Lord. And because of that, he's going to honor our obedience. And we're going to talk about what submission is and what it isn't in just a second. Amen. So, Ben, one of the problems, one of the, one of the problems that we have um, is, that, is that we, as, as men, uh, again, we talked about the fact that we, we focus a lot on verse 22. And, and quite frankly, Fellas, you know, I tend to be a little harder on the fellas because I just believe that God's plan is that we are to take a leadership role. And, and so, 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 fellas, um, one of the problems that we have is that we are not modeling submission. The Bible is very clear that we are to submit one to another. And so, therefore, we men have to take the lead and model submission. We, in other words, we have to show what submission looks like. Uh, you know, we, we have to, we, we are not off the hook. And, and so, so Ephesians 5 and 24 uh, shows us this, is that now as the church submits to Christ, so also our wives should, should submit to their husbands and everything. But the first part of that is the focus part, is that now as the church submits to Christ. So now who is the church? We are all a part of the church. In other words, we all have a responsibility to submit to Christ. And so the submission is, is something that we have to show. It's not something that, that, that God is looking for in lip service. 
And so we men, we have to show our families, show our wives what submission looks like. They have to see it in us by the way that we carry ourselves, uh, how, we, how we carry ourselves before the Lord. When we submit to God, what does that mean to us? Well, if I'm submitting to God, I'm obeying his word. If I'm, not, if I'm going to obey his, if I'm going to submit to him, I must first decide, humble myself and decide that I'm going to obey God's word. And so, but not now it goes beyond that because my submission, it says submit one to another. There, there are times that I need to submit to my wife. Huh? There are some times Amen. I have to realize that there are some things that my wife is better than, than I am. You know, you know, I look at the, my, my wife is better at, at dealing with the household affairs. My, my wife is better at actually managing our money. My, my, my wife is better at, at she's more creative. She she's definitely more compassionate than I am. <laughs> and, and so so I realize that if I am going to do as unto the Lord, the Lord and submit one to another, there are some times, men, that we actually have to submit to our wives. It, it, so so now watch now understand this. A good leader is also a good follower. If you cannot be a good follower, you cannot be a good leader. Amen. Also, if you are a good leader, you have to recognize that when you need help, mm-hmm. you have to recognize that, that, that the talents that of what, that what God has put in our wives, they, they, he, he put them there specifically for us. I have a strong belief that, you know, when the Bible talks about it, that, that in, in Genesis that God took a rib from Adam and made woman, uh, and I, I, have, I have a belief, I've, I've mentioned this before in several settings, that, that in, in my, sp- my, my spiritual imagination, um, uh, when, when the Lord took a rib, that he took my rib, he brought my rib back almost 30 years ago Amen. and put it in place. And it fit just as it was supposed to fit. And, and so I need to recognize that she's got some things that she brings to me. She, she compliments me. And, and so, therefore, I have to recognize that there's some things in her that the, I need to also submit to. Amen. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about that word submission from the female point, from the wise perspective. But, but let me just start by saying what submission is not, okay? First and foremost, uh, submission, as has already been stated, is not just for the wives. Submit as unto the Lord, one to another. It's not just for us. Don't think that we're the only ones who God has said to be submissive to. All right. So the second thing is, is that uh, it does not mean we become somebody's slave or doormat. Oh, no. If anything, submission provides us with freedom. As Pastor Carl talked about, it's easy for us to be submissive to our bosses and, and those in authority who give us money or we know that we have to respect or there'll be detrimental uh, causes. But what we sometimes forget about is that they're responsible for the burdens and things of our actions. So I don't know about you, but I don't want the responsibility that my husband has for me and some of the things that go on, okay? So, so the third thing um, that submission is not, is that uh, it's not that the wife never has her own opinion or can give advice or open her mouth, contrary to that. Remember, we are put and given to our husbands because they needed help. And we have to sometimes tell them because we are more detail-oriented. We do see things that they miss. That's why we're there for them to give help. And if we don't speak up, if we don't give advice that they need, they'll make misinformed decisions. So we do have a purpose and an opinion, and it's needed. The fourth thing that submission is not, it is not uh, that the wife becomes a wallflower. What do I mean by that? We still have our own purpose. We still have our own identity. Yes, they are our primary focus. When we say our do, we are saying, I am willing, just like Christ said, to fulfill the will of the Father. And what we're saying when we get married is that, yes, 
I am willing to help fulfill the purpose that God has placed in their lives. But there is still, still purpose in us. And, and Proverbs 31 clearly talks about that through the virtuous woman. She did it all in addition to taking care of her husband. Now, I'm still striving to get there. I'm not there by any stretch of the imagination. But that's just there to show us that we have a purpose of our own and a mission of our own to fulfill. Amen? Amen. Now, the last thing that I want to share that uh, submission is not, it's not in any way, shape, or form that we are inferior to our husbands. In Genesis chapter 1, when God created the husband and the wife, he said, let us make man and let us make them in our own image. And he said, let them be fruitful and multiply. Let them subdue the earth. He said, let them rule over the fish of the sea and every living creature. All right. So that's what submission is not. Okay. Now, Here's what submission is. Now, don't get, get quiet on me on this part, okay? Uh, submission is, is it's a positive and not a negative concept, okay? Um, so why is, we have to see and, and, and always keep in mind that this is a teamwork. We're a part of a team, and we're, we're a witness to other married couples, all right? But we do it together. Okay, so submission is a positive and not a negative concept. It's also a spiritual matter. This is something, ladies, where we are saying that, God, I trust and believe in your word. I trust and believe in your word that if you said that this is what I was created for, then I'm going to believe it and do it even if I don't understand it fully. All right? It's a spiritual matter. Also, Submission is to be something that is ongoing. We can't decide, all right, I can submit to this because I can deal with that. But when it goes against our grain and our flesh, now I'm not submitting to that. We can't pick it up and put it down. It's to be a continuous thing. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. But when we recognize it and when we are being tapped on the shoulder by the Holy Spirit saying, you, you know, you're not walking in obedience right now then we need to heed to that, all right? So, and another thing that submission is, um, it's, it's, it's really about our actions and our attitude. You can't say you're going to submit and have a stank attitude while you're doing it, <laughs> amen? You just can't. Your attitude, and, and, and we know how our body language can be, even if we don't say it, and our, especially me, my husband tells me all the time that I wear my heart on my sleeve. So we have to be willing. Think about this. Christ left the Father to fulfill his will. And he said, it brings me pleasure to fulfill the will of the Father. That's what we're supposed to have. That's the attitude we're supposed to have. So those are just a few things that submission is. And, and lastly, it is our responsibility to choose to do so. God isn't going to force us to do it. But we have to choose to do it. And if we don't choose to do it, then we're walking in the spirit of Jezebel. Simply put, I know, yeah, that's a tough one. But that's what's happening when we choose not to make this our responsibility. And, and ultimately, it is, a, it is something that we are actually doing as we're modeling what God did. He, he, Jesus Christ is co-equal. He, he, is, he is god that just came into the flesh. And so he himself put himself in order. Jesus, while he walked the earth, says, I, I, don't, I say only what the Father says. I do, what the Father, I do only what the Father tells me to do. And, and so he himself put himself under submission. So it's, it, he did not lower himself. All he did was put himself in order. And so, so it's important that we realize that this, this is not, you know, I look at, um, you know, submission in the, in the sense from a, from a, even from a military perspective, uh, uh, you know, my, my brother Sewell, you know, he tells me, he tells all the time about some of his street uh, uh, ventures and what have you. And so, 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 you know, if you're, if you're walking in a line and, and the bullets are flying, uh, the person up front is going to get hit first. Mm -hmm. So ladies, you don't want to be up front. <laughs> when, when, the, when the enemy's starting to shoot, you, you don't want to be up front, 
God, God has, has given us uh, uh, enough of the fortitude, uh, enough shielding, enough, uh, enough uh, um, uh, armament that we can, we, can, we can withstand some of those darts and some of, some of, some of those uh, bullets that are coming at us. So ladies, you don't want to get in the way because he may not have fortified you in the same way. Amen. And so, the, so that, the, the first leg, the, fir, the second leg or the second piece uh, of, of uh, what God believes, I believe what God is saying for our, our for successful marriage, uh, our second point is love without strings. Mm -hmm. Love without strings. God showed us, in, in, and so in, in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, it tells us, husbands, love your wives just as... Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And, and so, so what, 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 uh, uh, what Paul is telling us here, he's, he's actually giving us a, a, a sample, if you will. He's telling men, okay, I need you to love your, love your wife. And it's a reason, there's a reason why God uh, tells men, do you notice in the scripture, there's never a case, never a time where God says, wives, love your husband. Mm -hmm. Never a time. Why? Because it is natural for women to love. It is innate in them to love. And so, so it is something that God has to tell the men and remind us mm -hmm. that you need to love your wife. Not just love them any old kind of way, but love them the way I love the church. Well, how, it begs the question, well, how did I love the church? And, and so, so we see that uh, you know, in, in John chapter 15, verse 13, it, it tells us that greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. So the fact that Jesus laid down his life, the fact that he gave his life, he showed his love for us. When he, when he tells us, how do, how are you, men, how are you supposed to love your wives as I did? Well, what does that mean? Well, men, I, that means I need you to lay down your life. I need to lay down your life for your wife. Now, I know there may be some who say, well, wait a minute, God wants me to die. No, no, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to lay down our agendas, mm -hmm. lay down our own needs, put our wives first. It's not, you know what, guess what? It is it's interesting how, uh, you know, we always want to promote our own stuff. Mm -hmm. God has made our wives fit and adaptable. When he made, when he made them help meets for us, he made them fit and adaptable. In other words, they are multipliers. They take what we give them, they multiply it, and they give it back to us. Amen. And so, so many a times, the thing that comes back to us looks so much different than the thing we gave them. Mm -hmm. so, so be careful what you give your wives. Amen. If you want love back, give love. Amen. If you want, if you want, uh, if you if you give a wife a, a house, she'll make it a home. If you give your wife uh, love, she will she will uh, uh, multiply that thing and love and respect and all sorts of beautiful things will come back at you. Mm -hmm. But if you give your wife heartache, she'll give you a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And 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 let me just say that. Oftentimes, the giving of love isn't by things. Early on in our marriage, um, when I was pregnant with our, our first child, um, I all of a sudden got a little paranoid because my husband had a gun. He's a hunter. And I said, I need you to get this gun out the house. I don't feel safe with this gun in the house. So he, he didn't argue because he knew that I, I wasn't gonna have any peace. So he sold his gun because he wanted me to be safe, no matter how illogical it may have been at the time. <laughs> and then he took it even a step further. Not only did he sell the gun, but he arranged for the, the transference of the gun to be done outside the home. He says, no, I don't want, I don't know who's coming to get this gun. So I don't want to bring that to the house. I knew immediately by that action of love, just for me and my safety and security, my peace of mind, that he was willing to put aside whatever it was that he wanted to do so I could feel safe. 
And that's how sometimes action speaks so much louder than words. The one thing. Man. <laughs> oh, the and by the way, he has a new gun. <laughs> you know, I got over it. That was years later because he hunts. I'm okay, but he knew this is just something I needed to do for her. <laughs> hey, hey, now, now, the interesting thing, the interesting thing is that I find um, most women would say that they have no problem submitting to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he has shown them great love. He has shown such amazing love for us. Amen. And so the problem is when, when we as men want our wives to submit to us, but yet have not shown them great love. I have never once in 30 years told my wife, you need to submit to me. The Bible says you're supposed to submit to me. The thing that I need to do is I show her love. And when I show her love, it is her natural inclination to want to submit. And so therefore, men, if we want our wives to submit to us, show love. If you want, if you want the, uh, all, all the joy that marriage brings, Amen. show love. Mm -hmm. If you want to not have to have a cantankerous wife, mm -hmm. show love. <laughs> and and so, so, so it's important that we, that we realize that, you know, Paul, Paul actually gives, tells us to what extent we're supposed to show love. In, in Ephesians 5 and 28 to 30, it tells us that in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives, here it is, as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hates his, their own body, but they feed and care for their bodies, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. And so, so, so let's be real. You know, men, men, uh, you know, we, men, men who don't, don't love themselves really got no business being married. Let's, I'm just, let's just lay this out. Mm -hmm. If you don't love yourself, so ladies, if you're thinking about getting married uh, and, and, and you, you with somebody that don't really love themselves, uh, guess what? They're not going to love you. Amen. Uh, if, 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 the Bible is very clear. We are supposed to love our wives the same way we love ourselves. And, I, you know, I have this thing about uh, 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 eating. I'm going to feed me. <laughs> you may starve, but I'm going to feed me. <laughs> I'm going to take care. I'm not going to do anything that's going to cause me pain. I'm not going to talk bad about me. There, I'm, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cover me. I'm going to dress me. I'm going to make mm -hmm. sure that I'm presentable. And so everything that you would do for you, men, we need to be doing for our wives. Amen. 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 And with that in mind, it was mentioned earlier about how Christ left the Father because he wanted to give. He wanted to show the love to the Father that he had by giving. Now think about this. He left glory. He left the presence of God Almighty to come to earth and to give of himself to people who were going to lie on him, people who were going to spit upon him, beat him, and people who were going to ultimately kill him. But it didn't matter. All he wanted to do was to please and give back to the Father the will that the Father had given to him. And he did it. And he did it wholeheartedly. We didn't hear him complaining or groaning at all. Now, the one thing I'll say, and the last thing on this, on this yeah, I just, I, I really, I feel very strongly about this, man. You know, and I, I really, I mean, this is going to be a nugget that, that you need to take and, and hide deep in your heart. Write this baby down. It's a good one. <laughs> if you want to change what you're getting, change what you're giving. If you want to change what you're getting, change what you're giving. I've, I've said it to many men that have come into my office or have talked to me and, well, she's doing this and she's doing that. First thing I say was, oh, stop, stop. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. If you want to change what you're getting, change what you're giving. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee that she will multiply that thing and give it back to you in spades. Yeah. And so we get to our last point. And the last point in how to have a successful marriage is respect. And let's look at this definition that I have for respect. It, 
It's, it is an act of giving particular attention, high or special regard, the quality or state of being esteemed. So what does that mean? Simply put, it means that we are to honor and esteem our husbands. So how do we do that in the natural? Because that all sounds good on paper, doesn't it? How do we do that on natural? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I happen to have a few things, because there's some action that is going to show our husbands how we respect them. Remember, the Bible tells the wives that we are to respect, in verse 33, our husbands. It doesn't say love, but it, is, it does command us to respect our husbands. So the first way that we can show respect is uh, we must believe in them. We have to believe that God has created them for a specific reason. And because of that mere fact, we have to believe in them. Amen? And then the second thing that we have to do, we have to uh, have confidence in them. So what's the difference between believing in them and having confidence in them? Well, the difference is, as I said, we have to believe that God has created them to be everything that he has uh, uh, designed him to be. Being confident in them is believing in their talents and their gifts and their skills that God has placed in them. So we have to remind them of those talents and gifts and help them to know that we have confidence in you because of this, that, and the other that you have done. All right? So another way that we show respect to our husbands, we have to stand by their side. Amen. We have to stand by their side when they're right. We have to stand by their side when they're wrong. And guess what? They're going to make mistakes just like we are. They're going to make mistakes. But how many of you want your spouse to abandon you when you make a mistake? So the same thing applies to us. We have to stand by their side when they make mistakes. Okay. And then the next thing is uh, we have to build them up. We should be their biggest cheerleader. When he leaves home from work, or you, if you happen to leave home first, he, you should, he should hear from you first and not the world that you look good today. You smell good. You go out there and conquer and do all that God has called you to do. You need to send them off. I don't care what happened the day before or whatever else, but you need to, he needs to know that you're his biggest cheerleader. And I kind of do this a lot. And this is one thing I know I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at. Because my girlfriends tease me all the time. Oh, yes, Carol, we know Carl can do anything. That's right. He can. And in my mind, there isn't anything he can't do. So if he ever comes to me and he says, oh, I don't know about this. I'm like, oh, you got this. You got this. I know you got this. So he knows I'm always going to be his biggest cheerleader. And I did skip over one. And this is very important. Um, we have to build them up with our words and not tear them down with our words. We have got to build them up and encourage them with our words. We have to let them know that there's nobody else that we would rather be with. And when they come home, they need to see it in our, in, in our eyes. Now, I was fortunate enough to be able to stay home after we had children. So that's why I keep referring to when they come home. If that is uh, uh, how things have worked for you, and if not, but when you're together and you're, you're uh, both home together, then they need to know, I'm glad you're home with me and build them up with your words. There is a, you know, I know when I, when I for, for 30 years, I've, I've, I've been excited to come home. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, there are, there are guys at work like, oh, man, I got to go home, you know, stuff going like, look, man, no, I, I can't wait to get home. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, so I, I realize that, uh, you know, this, I think this, there may be a little bit of a, a male pride on this one. Um, you know, ladies, when, 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 when my wife shows me respect, that, 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 it, it does pump, my, pump me up a little bit. Um, you know, to, to men... Respect, showing, being shown respect is like, it's, it's, it's like, um, it's like spinach to Popeye. Oh, gosh. 
it, it's like dilithium crystals to, to Star Trek Enterprise. You know, it, it, it's like the, the, the Earth's sun to Superman. It, it, it strengthens me. It promote. it pushes me. When, when, when she shows me respect, oh my, there's nothing that I can't do. Even though I, I may not be able to, I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> but because there's something about when when she does that, it and and the thing is, this is a circular thing. Yes, it is. It's a So so the more she shows me respect, the more I want to show her love, and the more I show her love, the more she wants to show me respect. And, and it's a constant, uh, a circular process. And, and the problem is that we, sometimes we let our guards down, mm -hmm. and we and one party will decide, you know what? I'm tired. I don't feel like doing that today. You know, I showed you love yesterday. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, well, you know what? You made me mad, so therefore, I'm not going to show you love today. Well, guess what? The church made Christ mad. That's right. Mm -hmm. the, the, the church turned his, their back on him. Amen. But yet, no matter what they did, what they did to him, he continuously showed them love. Yes. And so, men, I know that's a, str a struggle for us, but I, I, I'm telling you, if we, can if we can muster that thing up to show the agape, the God kind of love, we will get the respect Amen. that we show desire. And, and I just wanted to add another thing, ladies. Don't ever, in public, put your man down under any circumstances. That is the ultimate betrayal. That cuts them deeper than anything. And, and we've witnessed it. We've witnessed a woman who um, just put her husband to shreds in, in public. And I, I, I felt so bad. I, you know, I felt like a little child wanted to crawl up under the chair and, and, and run away. It was that bad. I don't care what's going on. You wait till you get home. You do something else. But do not ever disrespect your husband to the point out in public that you have embarrassed him. That is one of the ultimate no-nos. Amen? It, it even got to the point where we were, in, even with our children as they were growing up, um, if, if we had to have a, a, a conversation. Can, can, uh, can, can I see you for a minute? That's how we're going. <laughs> can, can we come over here? Mm -hmm. and, and we'll go have a, a conversation uh, outside of their presence. Uh, because we didn't, we, we didn't want them to, to know that there, there's some issues going on. Uh, but we realized <coughs> that, again, there, there is this, uh, I, my desire, ultimately, ultimately, I know, I'm confident in this one thing, that I know that my wife loves me. Amen. I know that she has my best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. And so no matter how bad it gets, no matter how difficult things get, I know that she has my best interest at heart. In, in, in when we, before we got married, mm -hmm. it was our desire, <clears throat> and we promised ourselves, and we, I had this thing, and I'd like, look, be careful if you marry me, because, you know, one of us is going to have to die if we get out of this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and so, so we made a promise to ourselves, and I'm not, I'm, there's, no, there's no slam on anyone who has gone through divorce, but we made a promise to ourselves that divorce will never be a topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. We used to call it the D word. Mm -hmm. Will never be discussed, will never be joked about. I don't care how bad it got. If I got to sit on this side and you sit on that side, the divorce will never even be a topic of conversation, never ever be something that you will, we will ever hear about mm -hmm. in our house. Mm -hmm. and, and so what, what does that do? Well, it lets her know that, mm -hmm. you know that she has the comfort and confidence to know that I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't care what, what, what the girl looked like at the water fountain at work. Mm -hmm. I don't care. It does not matter. I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so we, I think that, men, we need to make sure that our wives have that confidence, that they know that no matter what's going on around us, no matter how bad things get, I'm not going anywhere. Right. Amen. And, and with that, we recognize, as, as Pastor Carr has already said, that you know, some couples have already gone through some divorces or whatever, and no shame in that. What we'd like to do now at this point, we'd like to invite all the couples up who are currently married, especially, and if your spouse is here, and those who are getting ready to get married. If you think you're getting ready to go that way, we just want to bring everyone together and have prayer. Amen? And if your spouse couldn't make it, 
because of the bad weather or something or they're traveling, come on up and know that, uh, let them know that you're covering for them. Amen. <laughs> Yo, come on. Don't be afraid. Amen. Well, bless God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. We know that the, the enemy's desire is to come and separate marriages. If he can separate a marriage, he can separate a family. If he can separate a family, he can potentially pull you away from the house of God. He can cause families and children to go astray and, 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 to, and to, to, to have their whole lives turned upside down. And so my prayer today that we will pray today is that God will do two things. Number one, solidify the marriages that have already been in existence, that are already in existence. And number two for those that are on the verge of getting married, that they will think about and focus on the foundation that God has laid and live those things that God has said. The Bible in Ecclesiastes 4 and 12 talks about the fact that, that a threefold cord is not easily broken. The foundation of marriage is Christ. Plain and simple. These three things that we've outlined from Ephesians are, are, are the pillars, if you will, that are built on top of that foundation. As long as you keep Christ as the, as you're in, in, your, in your marriage, as the foundation, and then you build these pillars of respect and love and submitting to one another, there's nothing you can't do. There's no hurdle that you can't overcome. There's no mountain that you can't scale. Nothing that you can, no, no argument, no issue, no dilemma, nothing that you can't get over. But your focus has to continually, I love him, I love her above anything that's going on right now. And I know he or she has got my best interest at heart. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for these couples that have come today. Some that are by themselves representing their spouse that may not be able to make it. But Lord, we pray for marriages in this house. Father, that from this moment forward, we realize that there may be some that have, uh, over the course of time, maybe gone through divorce. But Lord, we're praying for solid marriages from this point forward. We're declaring that this shall be a no divorce zone. This shall be a house of worship, oh God. This shall be a house that promotes marriage and promotes husbands and wives, uh, uh, promotes unity in marriage, oh God. And we thank you right now for every person that is here and those that are, that are, that are streaming, those that are watching, those that are, that are preparing, those that are, that are sitting at home looking at this together. Lord, we pray, God, that you would bless them, that you would guide them, oh, Father, that they, that they would speak to one another with words of love and admiration and adoration, that they would speak with, to each other, Lord, and, and encourage one another and let the, each other know, Father, that, that they are the ones that, the, that, the, that, the, 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 that God has brought together. Lord, we thank you right now for, for husbands and wives, Lord, that love one another. We thank you, God, that you have blessed us with unity, uh, Father. We ask right now that you would bind us together, that you would be that cord, that third, that third cord, oh God, that, that, that holds us together. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You will not be able to cause division in this, in this household, oh God. You will not be able to cause division in these marriages. We declare it now in the name of Jesus, oh God, for those that are preparing to get married, Lord, let this, let this be a, a, a lesson to them, oh God, as they speak to one another, as they encourage one another. Lord, we pray right now that they would make the commitment today that divorce 
divorce is not an option, that they will go through hard times and good times together. They will lift one another up, and, but most importantly, they will hold up the bloodstained banner. They, they will continue to, to watch over one another. They will continue to, to, to speak the words of Christ Jesus in their marriage, Lord. They will continue to read together and pray together. Father, we thank you right now for these marriages. We thank you, God, for the stability of the marriages in this house, Lord. And we pray, God, that we are the examples to those around us, those that desire to know what marriage is supposed to be like. Let them look at us, oh God, to be able to say that that is what marriage is truly all about. We bless you now, God, and we thank you, God, for every person here today, Lord, whether they're married or not. We bless you, God, and thank you for your grace and your mercy that has allowed us to come together today. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let all of God's people say amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah. Now, if your spouse is with you, I want you to give him a big, give him a big hug. Amen. If she, if they're not, wait till you get home. Give him a big hug. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, is that? To God be the glory. We just thank God for all of you. And I am so appreciative of all of you pressing your way uh, to come and to, to hang out with us today. I, 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 I know that there are others that could, uh, could use this. Um, and I'm going to do that. that, that uh, how, how many of you, um, I know we don't have a whole lot of people. How, how many were married more than, um, and your spouse is still with you, um, more than uh, 50 years? Anybody more than 50? All right. Anybody else more than 50? All right, Kadeek, come here for a second. You, you're going to rep represent your wife, you and your wife. Amen. <laughs> How many years? 51. 51 years. All right. Amen. All right, so now let's look at the other end. How many have been married for less than two? Anybody married less than two? Two or less, two or less, two or less. Nope. Come, hey, come on up. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on up, come on up. Amen. I married them. Amen. Come on, y'all. <laughs> it's, it's like some months now, right? How many months? How many months? Is it? Uh, seven months, I believe. Se seven months. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We, got, we, got, we just got a little something for you. And just wanted to, to thank God for you. <laughs> and so, come and put your hands together for our, for our couples. Amen. 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 Come on, why don't we stand to our feet? You know, I would be remiss, and I, I don't want to assume, make any assumptions. I don't want to make any assumptions. If there's anyone here today that doesn't know the Lord, and you're saying today, I need, I need this Jesus that you talk about. If that's you and you want to accept Jesus Christ today, what an amazing day to accept Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. A day that you press your way in the midst of uh, bad weather to come and to give your life. What, what an amazing day. If there's one today that's saying, I need this Jesus, and I want to accept him. I just want you to slip your hand up wherever you are. I don't know if, you, if there's anyone in here today. But maybe you've already accepted Jesus Christ if you're, if you're looking for a church home. Uh, I don't know if we're all home folk, but if you're, if you're looking for a church home and you want, to ex you want to come and make Greater Shiloh your church home, if that's you, would you come today? We want to accept you into our family. We have, we have some amazing things going on, and I just want to thank God for all of the people of God that make this church happen. It is, it's not, it's not, trust me, it's not me. I'm just, I'm just a, the servant. Uh, and so I just thank God for all of you today. And so, Father, we thank you for all that you have allowed us to experience today. Thank you for your word, Lord. 
Thank you, God, for teaching us men and women to, to, to have a strong foundation for our marriage. Lord, I pray that we would take these pearls and not, not, just, not just point to someone else and say, you do. But Lord, help us to, to look, to use these words as a mirror that we can see ourselves, that we can change us. But we know, Lord, that if we focus on us and focus on you, that you will bind marriages together. You will bring relationships together. God, we just thank you for all that you have given and shown us today. We honor you, Father, for all that you are. Lord, give us safe passage home. I pray, God, that we would, every one of us, Lord, that there should be no accidents. We're declaring it now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, for what you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's people say amen. 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 Thank you all so, so much. God bless you. You're dismissed. For, the, for those that ordered candy from uh, Kara, uh, you can see Shireen.